Uh, so this is example one. Uh, for this example, we are given this soil profile. So we have, this is ground surface. In water table, again, some distance below the ground surface. So we have this water table. And the difference here in this problem statement uh, we're going to assume dry sand above ground surface. Okay, so instead of using gamma moist, we're going to use gamma dry. Uh, since uh, for this profile, this first layer is completely dry, so we're going to use gamma D, gamma dry. And we have saturated unit weight for the second layer as well. So we're going to calculate total stress, pore pressure, and effective stress. Okay. All right. So this is the setup, and we know the the thickness of these two layers. And I'm going to use this uh, slide here to show the calculation details. So we have, uh, again, ground surface. Okay. Depths are given. Okay. So we know the two unit weights. Okay. And for this profile here, we'll start with total stress again. So I'm going to call this sigma. So this is total. And for total stress, um, we're going to calculate point A, B, and C. So point A is zero. Let's see. And then for point B, let me draw a straight line here. So for point B, the total stress at this location, unit weight times depth. So that's gamma D times uh, corresponding depth. So this is, uh, let's see if I have the value here. So this is six times gamma D. Okay, so it's 99. So let's use kilonewton per meter square. Okay. So that's unit. So six is the depth of this dry sand layer above water table. And then for this depth here, Point C, it's six gamma D plus the saturated layer thirteen times gamma saturated. Okay. So again, unit weight times the corresponding depth. Okay. Six D is the first layer, the dry sand layer, and thirteen set gamma saturated is thirteen meter of saturated sand layer or soil layer. So that's 13 times gamma saturated. And if you plug in numbers, this is 349.25. Okay. And I've put unit here, so it's kilonewton meter square, same unit. Right. And then you can connect these points to get uh, basically this variation of stress along depths. So that's the total stress. And then for pore pressure, U. So this is pore pressure. Okay. In semi unit, kilonewton per meter square. And for pore pressure, okay, I'm going to add a vertical line. So this is zero per pressure line. Um, above water table in the dry soil layer, uh, there's no pore pressure. So it's zero for the first layer. Okay, so zero here. And let me add a zero for the total stress there as well. Okay. So zero at the surface, then zero at the bottom of the dry soil layer. Again, because it's above water table, there's no pore water pressure above water table, so it's at zero. And then for the the bottom of the soil layer, point C, so this point here, the pore pressure is gamma water times the corresponding depth, which is 13. So that's the height of the water column. So it's from point C to water table. 
so the 13 meters. And this gives you 127.53. Okay. And gamma water, by the way, uh, for SI unit, Nine point eight one kilonewton per meter cube. So that's a unit weight of water in a SI unit system. And once you have these two, then effective stress just the difference between these two. So the last one, sigma prime total minus pore pressure in same unit effective stress. I'm going to add this zero line again. Oh, hold on. So for the pore pressure, we need to connect these two points. Okay. And then for effective stress, uh, sigma prime, as I mentioned, this is the difference between these two. So for the first layer, because pore pressure is zero, so this is going to be 99. So for the dry layer, effective stress, total stress is the same. So pore pressure is zero. So we can connect these two points. And then the bottom point C, this is basically 349.25 minus 127.53. Okay. So that's the difference between total and pore pressure. That gives you the effective stress. And this is 221.72. Okay. And if we keep three significant digits, so this is basically 222. Okay. So you can connect these two points. So that gives you the effective stress profile along depth. All right. And for this effective stress, again, we can use a buoyant unit weight. Okay. So this is uh, one way to do it. So, so this is say approach one. So we're using uh, the difference between total stress and pore pressure to calculate effective stress. And that always applies. So it can be used for any scenario. In approach two, we can use the buoyant unit weight. Okay. So for this buoyant unit weight, we can calculate effective stress as, so this is at point C, six times gamma D. Okay. So that's a dry layer. So we have that six times dry unit weight then for the saturated layer, the second layer, we can use a buoyant unit weight to calculate its corresponding effective stress. All right, so for this second approach, basically use uh, gain buoyant unit weight. This is the buoyant unit weight. So substitute gamma saturate, which is 19.25, and gamma water, 9.81, into this expression, you get the same uh, number. So this is 222. Okay, so you get the same. Okay. So if you're dealing with saturated unit weight, or if you're dealing with saturated soil layer, the approach to is probably faster. So you can directly use the buoyant unit weight times corresponding depth. It's probably faster. Uh, but if it's moist uh, unit weight, uh, you have to use approach one. 